Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, creeps in this petty pace from day to day, to the last syllable of recorded time. Of course court hasn't ended yet. Welcome to Night Vale. Oh, yay! Good morning, Western Crown Tourney. These are your 874 AM announcements. As we are guests at this sheep farm, we remind you not to approach the sheep. The Kyurgens have run low on anti-venom, and the sight waivers against the undead appear to have gone missing. We have received reports of recent sightings of squirrels in the surrounding hills. Huh. In light of these sightings, the constables would like to remind everyone to please move your vehicles to the designated parking areas which have been properly warded. We are not responsible for any ectoplasm-related damage to any vehicles left in unwarded areas. Today is setting up to be a hot one, so please remember to drink plenty of water and wear plenty of sunscreen. Again, please drink the water and wear the sunscreen. The Heralds apologize again to Duke Frederick of Holland for last tournament's mishap. Gentles, Sir Albrecht von Schmutzenhelm's armor has gone missing. If found, please return to the list table. No questions asked. We don't care if it walked off under its own power. We just want it returned. The Heralds are seeking volunteers for today's tourney. If you are a Herald, or are interested in becoming a Herald, please report to Herald's Point, the big green and yellow sunshade with the crossed trumpets out front. Do not report to the big yellow and green sunshade with the inverted cross trumpets. Those are the anti-herald, and the less said about them, the better. Additional volunteers are needed for the list today. Anyone interested in becoming a water bearer, fire bearer, acid bearer, or blood bearer, please report to the list field. Hello, new heralds, or as we like to say, coronets. <laughs> Welcome to Field Herald Training 101. It's really quite simple. Each of you should have a pennon and floor-length hooded cloak which match the color of your field, and of course your cheat sheet with instructions. When in doubt, check your documentation. When you have the paired cards from the list table, report to your assigned field. Cast your circle in the Mixolydian mode, then summon the fighters in a clear and distinct voice using the invocation provided. Once the fighters have appeared on the field, lead them through the salutes, including the crown, the guardians of the cardinal, ordinal, and interordinal gates, the one whose favor they bear, the one whose bear they favor, and lastly, one another. Instruct them to heed the commands of the marshals, then run like hell before the fighting starts. Witness the fight. If no one outside the list field watches the fight, it cannot be said to have occurred at all. Once the dust has settled and the marshals have counted each fighter's remaining body parts, perambulate the field three times intoning the name of the victor. This should dismiss the fighters and you can cast your circle again. Be sure to mark who won the combat on each fighter's card and pass the cards to the nearest list page, easily recognizable in their neon orange slops and doublets. We cannot be held responsible for what the list officer does to you if you forget this vital step. And that's it! Now you're ready to run your field. Watch for the pulse of green energy coming from the list table to collect your cards for round one. At Twelfth Night, the Golden Stag players will present the musical comedy of Titus Andronicus. They are looking for audience volunteers to lend a hand. The pastry recipes served during the show can be sourced to Cariadox Miscellany. At Beltane, there will be a live chess game. In the interest of keeping unintended fatalities to a minimum, the Pope of Avignon will be played by the Noodle. If you wish to participate as a chess piece, a ritual combatant, or a holy water bearer, please contact the organizers. Pawns will be conscripted on the day. The West Kingdom Attack Choir will be holding auditions for weaponized sopranos and siege tenors. We encourage proficiency in various vocal techniques, such as bel canto, mal canto, canto del orco nuovo, and screamo. The bass section is full. Please stop. Altos are also welcome. 
Anno Societatis 13 has been retroactively cancelled. We regret any inconvenience. The scheduled Known World Haruspices and Sibyls Symposium has been cancelled due to unforeseen circumstances. This has been Kingdom Calendar. Gentles, there are reports that Sir Albrecht's armor is indeed walking around on its own. It appears to be following the dried up riverbed. We are theorizing that it simply wants to be cleaned for the first time since AS single digits. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. Look around you. What immediately draws your attention? That's right, shiny metal jewelry. Everyone has it. Everyone but you. Rings, necklaces, circlets, brooches. The shiny is everywhere. You feel your skin begin to itch. Where did all the sparklies come from? You feel naked without it. Your fingers hunger for adornment. Your bosom screams for décolletage. But what's there behind you? Coming from Merchant's Row, that glow, that beautiful glow. You're drawn to it as a moth to a flame. Weakened from need, you can't walk, so you fall to your knees and crawl. Closer, ever closer. What is it? Ashknaz Drubatuluk, Ashknaz Gimbatul, Ashknaz Thratakuluk, Agburzum Ishi Krimbatul. This message brought to you by Morgan Athenry, Queen of Goldsmiths and Goldsmith to Queens. The constable would like to remind folks to be wary of drunk traps that have been spotted near the camping area. Despite clearly marking them with yellow caution tape, they are continuing to move about. If during your walks this evening you come across a bottle of brandied lemonade sitting next to a pit emanating blue celestial light and or sirens call, we recommend that you play it safe and continue on your way. Gentles, we are in need of anyone with sufficient knowledge of corpora and the Marshal's Handbook to be able to determine whether sentient suits of armor can enter themselves in the list. There has already been considerable debate, and at least one fatality. Ah, I have just been handed documentation about one Heinrich McDaniels, single inhabitant and nine-headed officer of Dragonshire. Despite their banishment and warrant for capture from the constable's secret deputies, said papers clearly show that they were able to obtain a single member number, giving precedence to the validity of the armor possessing all necessary documentation for entering the lists. We would like to thank the anonymous Samaritan for providing us with this information, but by the time we looked up, all of their heads were receding quickly into the bright blue sky. Be it known to all good gentles, and bad gentles, and gentles of indeterminate alignment, that there will be a vigil for Hans Dukenfader this evening. He will be missed. Gentles are encouraged to partake in refreshments this evening at the Cock and Tentacles Tavern and Fun Complex. Formerly Cockatries and Minotaur, get stoned out of your gourd. Be sure to say hi to Joel, you know, the brewer. Remember, while this was a wet site last year, this year is a drowned site, so a beverage is mandatory. There will be a torch-lit tourney this evening. Fighting will not begin until all combatants have been thoroughly doused with lighter fluid and immolated. Now for this week's horoscopes. Capricorn, don't worry about the storm clouds above you. All clouds have a silver lining. <laughs> oh, my mistake. Those are ravens. So many that they blot out the sun, which is okay because you forgot to put your sunscreen in your basket and you are definitely not going to get a sunburn at the event now. See? A silver lining. Pisces, you are now Leo. We apologize for this inconvenience. It should be remedied in the next Kingdom Law update. Taurus, dishonor on you, dishonor on your family, dishonor on your cow, screams Mistress Gertrude at this evening's household dinner. She still remembers the incident from AS7. The stars recommend drinking heavily tonight. Good luck. And for our thirteenth sign, Hamby the Golden Stag. Cope. Gentles, gather for this, the finals of Crown Tourney, being between Sir Albrecht von Schmutzenhelm, fighting for his lady, Catherine Bodisfiller, and the armor of Albrecht von Schmutzenhelm, fighting for its consort, the bodice of Catherine Bodisfiller. 
Generals, salute you, the crowns. Salute you, the avatars of the guardians of the Northern Gate. Salute you, the avatars of the guardians of the North Northeastern Gate. Salute you, the avatars of the Northeastern Gate. Salute you, the avatars. While the, the initial salutes are being given, let's Gate. check out the weather. Salute you. Activities and presentations, education, other and demonstrations, activities and presentations, education, other and demonstrations, events, participants' lives, the enriched to history, world of knowledge, employment and culture, contact arts, skills, century, 317, and of recreation, and research, the two devoted is SCA Dove, organization educational, volunteer, non-profit, international, under SCA. Volunteer non profit international anachronism creative for society. For those of you still under quarantine and watching this from the alleged safety of your own home, Fun fact, did you know that 95% of all dangerous domestic accidents occur in the home? The web minister has devised a way to provide commentary for this occasion. At first, there was some animated discussion, hand-drawn mostly, many thanks to the Guild of Scriveners and Limners in Motion, as to whether, considering the nature of our finalists, it would be more appropriate to source the expertise of knowledgeable fighters or experienced armorers seeing as the budget would only allow for one. As luck would have it, Duke Fabian, who is both, was gracious enough to provide us with commentary, which we absolutely assure you had nothing to do with us tactically placing a phalanx of protégés in front of the privies and changing all of the Hastings locks to Agincourt locks. Your Grace, can you elaborate on the ruling made today by the Kingdom Seneschal and the Earl Marshal in light of the extraordinary and singular circumstance taking place right now? Very well. The debate is centered on two points. One, if the armor is fighting against Sir Albrecht, what will he wear? Where is the line drawn between what is the armor and what is Sir Albrecht himself? And more importantly, two, where is the sentient suit of armor at sit in the order of precedence? Does being a suit of armor convey the rank and position of the former wearer? Do the clothes, in fact, make the man? Or vice versa. The decision of the council was to render onto the armor what is the armor's, and render onto Sir Albrecht what is Sir Albrecht's. As this title implies, the regalia will remain with Sir Albrecht. That is to say, he is entitled to his belt, his chain, and his spurs. The armor, being armor, is thus entitled to all pieces of protective gear. In a sporting gesture by the armor, Sir Albrecht will be permitted to retain his gambeson, to the great relief of all present. It has been speculated that this is not so much as an example of altruism as no one, not even the armor, wants to be in contact with that thing. It is fortunate that Sir Albrecht customarily fights Florentine as each combatant will be given one sword, thus sparing us the spectacle of an entrant without any weapon. Listeners may be not aware of this, but there was one fighter in the very early days of the SCA who fought only with a small buckler, dubbing himself Captino Amerigo, it is safe to say that we've come a long way since then. And here we go. This is exciting. There are so many possibilities here. Personally, I think the best strategy for Sir Albrecht... And they appear to have just simultaneously one shot at each other. Double kill to start out. Well, that's unusual. Feels par for the course for this most unusual finals. Your Grace, while the combatants reset for the next pass, would you like to finish your previous thought? Thank you. I was just contemplating what I would do under a similar situation, and knowing Sir Albrecht, I expect he would consider a similar strategy. Essentially, if one were to consider the sage advice of Johannes Luchtenauer, the optimal plan of attack would be to- Sorry to interrupt here, Your Grace, but they appear to have double killed again. Yes, it seems that they're evenly matched, as if they've had the same experiences, fought exactly the same battles. They know each other's fighting style because, well, for lack of a better term, they are each other's fighting style. The only need to uh, observe them, yep, there's another double kill, to see that the determining factor will be who can stay up the longest. 
where there's Sir Alberic's stamina, well, at last, his armor's buckles and fittings. Yes, but even though they are evenly matched, we really are looking at two distinct and separate entities. After all, one is just a hollow shell, a mindless construct whose existence begins and ends with combat, and who seemingly is held together only by duct tape and twine. And the other is a suit of armor, yes. The blows are really starting to heat up. Now as both combatants get into the beautiful rhythm, Sir Albrecht throws a blow in his opponent's helm, which is caught by the armor's basket hill. The armor does a beautiful head fake, impressive given its lack of a head, swings wildly at Sir Albrecht, and his sword is felled by Albrecht's chain of fealty. Albrecht pulls away, gauges his distance, and- And the armor delivers a full force thrust to Sir Albrecht's sternum. He's down, good gentles. Sir Albrecht is down. What a magnificent shot. The classic teardrop return with the Molinet ending in a Fiori perfect rapier thrust. I've not seen anything like that since Duke Stryker won the giant fish at the William Marshalls tournament a decade ago. And with that, victory to the armor of Sir Albrecht von Schmutzenhelm. He vows to rule with an iron fist. Long live the heirs of the West. If the Bard of the West could stop giggling for a moment, perhaps we can wrap up? Here now ends the evening's announcements. Thank you for attending Crown, and as always, farewell, Night Vale. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Night Vale is produced in association with the Golden Stag Players and performed by Gislaine Trieste, Amaric Dufois, Cormac Moore, Asa Torvald's daughter, with special guest appearances by Juan Santiago, Fabian Arnett von Schwechinen, Frederick of Holland, Colin McLear, and Beata Augusta von Ickenheim, with technical support and engineering by Alessandro Cantori. Directed and produced by Juan Santiago. Music is Hieronymus Bosch Butt Music. Arrangement created by James Spalink and performed by Andro. Used with permission. Inspired by and with the blessings and proper incantations of the podcast Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. Today's proverb, Lorem ipsum dola sit amet. <laughs>